Here we are, guys, with a little bit of IXL 8R2. This is asking you to come up with a similar figure with a dilation. It gives you a starting thing, like in this case, it's giving us a triangle, but you might get a square, a rectangle, a parallelogram, uh, some kind of polygon, some kind of shape, and then it gives you a scale factor that you have to use to make a new figure. And all these questions, they always have them centered at the origin. If you don't know what that means yet, don't worry. You could have a center that's not at the origin, but in all these ones, they like to keep it simple, so it's centered at the origin with this scale factor. So the way you do this is really all it's saying is, for each of these points, focus on the points, and you've got to move each of these points using that scale factor. So right now, I've got this point here, and it's at this place. It's at two and two. So if I have to move it, I'm saying I'm starting at two and two. Oops, not two and 20, there we go, all right. I've got two and two, and using that scale factor of five, I'm gonna find coordinates for a new point for my point F, right? So I'd say, well, let me multiply each of these guys by that scale factor. If the scale factor is five, I take that X coordinate, and I say X coordinate times five will give me my new X coordinate. And then I look at the Y coordinate, which here happens to be two as well, I multiply it by the scale factor. When I do that, this will give me my new X coordinate, this will give me my new Y coordinate for the point that I gotta put in. So in this case, I have an X coordinate of 10 and also a Y coordinate of 10. And that's all I need to know to figure out where my new point F has to go. So back in my uh, IXL, I say I'm looking for point 10, 10, so that's 10 on X, 10 on Y. That means point F is now point F prime way up here. Okay, now I gotta do the same thing for E. I look at its coordinates, it's got a coordinate of negative two for x and positive two for y. Let me go back here and say I've got a coordinate of negative two for x and positive two for y. Negative two and positive two. And if those are my coordinates for my old point E here and I'm looking for a new E prime, it's gonna be up there somewhere. I said, let me take these coordinates, multiply both of them by my scale factor. So that means I gotta do negative two times five and positive two times five, right? That negative two times five, that's just my x coordinate times the scale factor that's showing up here. That two times five is just my y coordinate times the scale factor. So I end up with negative two times five, which gives me negative 10, and my positive two times five, which gives me 10. What I've done here is calculated my new x coordinate, my new y coordinate for this point, negative 10 and 10. I know now that I'm looking for this point here on my Cartesian grid. So let me go back to the Cartesian grid and let me put that negative 10 and 10 right on there. So this E is now started here, went all the way up there. All right, last one left is G. Its coordinates are negative 2 and negative 2. So let me calculate that. I've got negative 2 and negative 2 to put on here. You can probably already guess what the answer to that is going to be. If I've got negative 2 and negative 2, and I'm multiplying both of those coordinates by my scale factor, which shows up here, I do negative 2 times 5, which gives me my x coordinate, and then negative 2, my y coordinate there, times my scale factor, will give me my new y coordinate, just like that. So this negative 2 here, times this scale factor here gives me my new x coordinate. This negative two here times my scale factor of five, which is showing up here, gives me my new y coordinate. That means my new point for uh, g is gonna be negative 10 and negative 10, just like that. Okay, so now I gotta put this point on the graph. I go back, negative 10 and negative 10. Negative 10 and negative 10, that'd be negative 10 and negative 10. Okay, now when I'm done here, this triangle that I've come up with, it should look similar to the original purple one that I had here. Similar means all the angles are the same. It's just like a bigger version of the original. Looking here, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna submit it because I think I got it right. And I did. So I'm gonna do that here again with this one, except in this one, if you look at the scale factor here, scale factor of one half. If it's a scale factor that's a fraction like this that's less than one, that means my new figure that I'm gonna be drawing here is gonna be smaller than the original one. It's going to be half as big. All the sides are going to be half as long. All the coordinates are going to be half as big. So let's start with the coordinates for point M here. Point M has coordinates of 6 for the X 
8 for the y, and I'm going to use a scale factor of 1 half. So I've got 6 for the x, 8 for the y. Let me just note my point here so I have my coordinates and I can see them. 6 and 8. Now what you'll find when you're doing this particular activity on IXL is that really the slower you go, the less time it'll take. Get out a piece of paper, work it out like you're seeing me, you show the numbers here. Because when you do it in your head, just there's a lot more chance that you're going to do it wrong. Here I've got 6 and 8, so i got to do 6 times 1 half, 6 times my scale factor of 1 half, and then 8 times my scale factor of 1 half to get my new coordinates. That means 6 times 1 half to get my x coordinate, which is 3, and 8 times 1 half which is my y-coordinate of 4. Now if you're a little scared of fractions, you see the way I did it here, I did my x-coordinate times my scale factor just like I would for an enlargement and it gave me 6 times 1 half gave me 3. If you're a little worried about fractions then whenever you realize okay I've got a scale factor that's less than 1 it's going to be shrinking, you can just say to yourself okay instead of thinking of it as times 1 half I'm going to think of it as divided by 2. Like if you write here 6 divided by 2, you'll still get 3. You'll still get the right answer. If you do 8 divided by 2, you're still going to get 4. So even if you think of it as dividing by that denominator there, by that 2 denominator in the scale factor, you're still going to end up with the same correct answer. Either way works. So this point here, 3 and 4, if I go back here, m started out at 6 and 8. I multiplied each coordinate by 1 half, and I got... 3 and 4. 3 and 4. That's my m. All right, n over here, it's got coordinates of negative 8 and positive 8. Let me go back, write those down. Negative 8 and positive 8 are my original coordinates. Let me put them on a piece of paper here, or the equivalent of it. You can see me putting it on the screen. That's the best I can do. Negative 8 and positive 8, that's my coordinates for n. I'm going to multiply my x coordinate, coordinate and my y coordinate by that scale factor. In this case, it's 1 half, so I do negative 8 times 1 half, and that gives me my new x coordinate. I'm going to do positive 8, my old y coordinate, times my scale factor to get my new y coordinate. So I've got negative 4 for the new x, 4 for the new y. That means my new point, negative 4 and 4. Okay. And once I've got this new point, that means my new n is going to be at negative 4 and 4. Let's put that in there. Negative 4 and 4, right there. I'm going to do the same thing with k. What are the coordinates for the current point k? Negative 4 for x, positive 10, sorry, negative 10 for y. Negative 4 for x, negative 10 for y. Let me write those down. Negative 4 and negative 10. Okay, same deal. I've got to look at the x-coordinate, look at my scale factor. x-coordinate times the scale factor will give me my new x-coordinate. My x-coordinate is negative 4, my scale factor is 1 half, so I do negative 4 times 1 half, or again, you can think of it as negative 4 divided by 2, and I get negative 2. I take my y-coordinate, which is negative 10, I multiply it by my scale factor, which is 1 half. And negative 10 times 1 half, or again, if you think of it as negative 10 divided by 2, you get the same answer, which is negative 5. That means I've got a coordinate of negative 2 for the x, negative 5 for the y. I figured out where my new point needs to be. Negative 2 for the x, negative 5 for the y. So I can put it in right there. And then for L, the last one I've got, 8 is my coordinate for x, negative 10 for y. 8 and negative 10 are my coordinates for point L. I write those down, 8, negative 10, and then I say to myself, I gotta multiply my x coordinate by my scale factor to get my new x coordinate. I gotta take my y coordinate times my scale factor to get my new y coordinate. And those together become my new point, 4 and negative 5. I've figured out the coordinates for my new point, so I go back and I figure out 4 and negative 5 are my coordinates for my point L, my new point L prime. 4 and negative 5 is right there. I put it in and now I see, alright, does this shape, this new green shape that I've made here, does it look like just a shrunken down version of the original one? Because it should. In this case it does. I'm happy with it. I'm going to hit submit. I've got it. 
So once you get comfortable with this, once you get really comfortable with this, then it flies by. But you need to go slow at the start to make sure you can handle it, right? Once you get really comfortable, you can just look at it and be like, oh, I know what this is going to look like already. It's going to look like this, right? And then the whole thing becomes a little bit faster. And you're not spending a billion minutes for each question, uh, which you want to do. But the only way that this happens is if you go slowly at first. You have to learn to get it. And then once you really get the hang of it, then hopefully you can start to fly through it a little bit more quickly.